The North American Aviation P-51 Mustang is an American long-range, single-seat fighter and fighter-bomber used during World War II and the Korean War, among other conflicts. The Mustang was designed in 1940 by North American Aviation, NA, in response to a requirement of the British Purchasing Commission. The Purchasing Commission approached North American Aviation to build Curtis P-40 fighters under license for the Royal Air Force, RAF. Rather than build an old design from another company, North American Aviation proposed the design and production of a more modern fighter. The prototype NA-73X airframe was rolled out on September 9, 1940, 102 days after the contract was signed, and first flew on October 26. The Mustang was originally designed to use the Allison V-1710 engine, which, in its earlier variants, had limited high-altitude performance. It was first flown operationally by the RAF as a tactical reconnaissance aircraft and fighter bomber, Mustang MKI. The replacement of the Allison with a Rolls-Royce Merlin resulted in the P-51B-C, Mustang MK3, model and transformed the Mustang's performance at altitudes above 15,000 feet, allowing the aircraft to compete with the Luftwaffe's fighters. The definitive version, the P-51D, was powered by the Packard V-1650-7, a license-built version of the Rolls-Royce Merlin 66 two-stage two-speed supercharged engine and was armed with 6.50 caliber, 12.7 mm, M2 slash and Browning machine guns. From late 1943, P-51BS and CS, supplemented by P-51DS from mid-1944 were used by the USAF's 8th Air Force to escort bombers in raids over Germany, while the RAF's 2nd Tactical Air Force and the USAF's 9th Air Force used the Merlin-powered Mustangs as fighter bombers, roles in which the Mustang helped ensure Allied air superiority in 1944. The P-51 was also used by Allied air forces in the North African, Mediterranean, Italian, and Pacific theaters. During World War II, Mustang pilots claimed to have destroyed 4,950 enemy aircraft. At the start of the Korean War, the Mustang, by then redesignated F-51, was the main fighter of the United Nations until jet fighters, including North Americans F-86, took over this role, the Mustang then became a specialized fighter bomber. Despite the advent of jet fighters, the Mustang remained in service with some air forces until the early 1980s. After the Korean War, Mustangs became popular civilian warbird and air racing aircraft. In April 1940 the British government established a purchasing commission in the United States, headed by Sir Henry Self. Self was given overall responsibility for Royal Air Force RAF, production and research and development, and also served with Sir Wilfred Freeman, the Air Member for Development and Production. Self also sat on the British Air Council Subcommittee on Supply, or Supply Committee, and one of his tasks was to organize the manufacturing and supply of American fighter aircraft for the RAF. At the time, the choice was very limited, as no U.S. aircraft then in production or flying met European standards, with only the Curtis P-40 Tomahawk coming close. The Curtis Wright plant was running at capacity, so P-40s were in short supply. North American Aviation, NA, was already supplying its Harvard trainer to the RAF, but was otherwise underutilized. NA President Dutch Kindleberger approached Self to sell a new medium bomber, the B-25 Mitchell. Instead, Self asked if NA could manufacture P-40s under license from Curtis. Kindleberger said NA could have a better aircraft with the same Allison V-1710 engine in the air sooner than establishing a production line for the P-40. The Commission stipulated armament of 4.303 in, 7.7 mm, machine guns, as used on the Tomahawk, a unit cost of no more than $40,000 and delivery of the first production aircraft by January 1941. In March 1940, 320 aircraft were ordered by Freeman, who had become the executive head of the Ministry of Aircraft Production, MAP, and the contract was promulgated on April 24. The NA-73X, which was designed by a team led by lead engineer Edgar Schmud, followed the best conventional practice of the era, but included several new features. 
One was a wing designed using laminar flow airfoils which were developed cooperatively by North American Aviation and the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics, NACA. These airfoils generated very low drag at high speeds. During the development of the NA-73X, a wind tunnel test of two wings, one using NACA five-digit airfoils and the other using the new NA-NACA 45-100 airfoils, was performed in the University of Washington Kirsten Wind Tunnel. The results of this test showed the superiority of the wing designed with the NA-NACA 45-100 airfoils. The other feature was a new cooling arrangement, aft positioned, single ducted water and oil radiators assembly, that reduced the cooling drag. It was later discovered that, after much development, the cooling assembly could take advantage of the Meredith effect in which heated air exited the radiator with a slight amount of jet thrust. Because NAW lacked a suitable wind tunnel to test this feature, it used the Galsit 10 feet, 3.0 m, wind tunnel at the California Institute of Technology. This led to some controversy over whether the Mustang's cooling system aerodynamics were developed by NAW's engineer Edgar Schmud or by Curtis, although NAW had purchased the complete set of P-40 and XP-46 wind tunnel data and flight test reports for $56,000. The NA-73X was also one of the first aircraft to have a fuselage lofted mathematically using conic sections, this resulted in smooth, low-drag surfaces. To aid production, the airframe was divided into five main sections forward, center, rear fuselage and two wing halves all of which were fitted with wiring and piping before being joined. The prototype NA-73X was rolled out in September 1940, just 102 days after the order had been placed, it first flew on October 26, 1940, 149 days into the contract, an uncommonly short gestation period even during the war. With test pilot Vance Breeze at the controls the prototype handled well and accommodated an impressive fuel load. The aircraft's three-section, semi-monocoque fuselage was constructed entirely of aluminum to save weight. It was armed with 4.30 caliber, 7.62 mm, M1919 Browning machine guns in the wings and 2.50 caliber, 12.7 mm, M2 Browning machine guns mounted under the engine and firing through the propeller arc using gun synchronizing gear. While the United States Army Air Corps, USAC, could block any sails it considered detrimental to the interests of the US, the NA-73 was considered to be a special case because it had been designed at the behest of the British. In September 1940 a further 300 NA-73s were ordered by the MAP. To ensure uninterrupted delivery Colonel Oliver P. Eccles arranged with the Anglo-French Purchasing Commission to deliver the aircraft and NA gave two examples, 41-038 and 41-039, to the USAC for evaluation. Operational History United Kingdom Operational Service The Mustang was initially developed for the RAF, who were its first users. As the first Mustangs were built to British requirements, these aircraft used factory numbers and were not P-51S, the order comprised 320 NA-73S, followed by 300 NA-83S, all of which were designated North American Mustang Mark I by the RAF. The first RAF Mustangs supplied under Lend-Lease were 93 P-51S, designated MKIA, followed by 50 P-51 as used as Mustang MKIIS. Aircraft supplied to Britain under Lend-Lease were required for accounting purposes to be on the USAC's books before they could be supplied to Britain. Lend-Lease aircraft destined for the RAF were first ordered and paid for on Britain's behalf by the USAC. After the arrival of the initial aircraft in the UK in October 1941, the first Mustang MK is entered service in January 1942, the first unit being 26 Squadron RAF. Due to poor high-altitude performance, the Mustangs were used by Army Cooperation Command, rather than Fighter Command and were used for tactical reconnaissance and ground attack duties. On May 10, 1942, Mustangs first flew over France, near Berks-sur-Mer. On July 27, 1942, 16 RAF Mustangs undertook their first long-range reconnaissance mission over Germany. During the amphibious Dieppe raid on the French coast, 
August 19, 1942, four British and Canadian Mustang squadrons, including 26 Squadron, saw action covering the assault on the ground. By 1943-1944, British Mustangs were used extensively to seek out V-1 flying bomb sites. The last RAF Mustang MKI and Mustang MK2 aircraft were struck off charge in 1945. The RAF also operated 308 P-51BS and 636 P-51CS which were known in RAF service as Mustang MKIIIs, the first units converted to the type in late 1943 and early 1944. Mustang MK3 units were operational until the end of World War II, though many units had already converted to the Mustang MK4, P-51D, and MK EVA, P-51K. 828 in total, comprising 282 MK4 and 600 MK EVA. As all except the earliest aircraft were obtained under Lend-Lease, all Mustang aircraft still on RAF charge at the end of the war were either returned to the USAF on paper or retained by the RAF for scrapping. The last RAF Mustangs were retired from service in 1947. U.S. Operational Service Pre-War Theory Pre-war doctrine was based on the idea the bomber will always get through. Despite RAF and Luftwaffe experience with daylight bombing, the USAC still believed in 1942 that tightly packed formations of bombers would have so much firepower that they could fend off fighters on their own. Fighter escort was low priority and when an escort fighter was planned in 1941, a heavy fighter with twin engines, such as the Lockheed P-38 Lightning, was considered to be most appropriate. Another school of thought favored a heavily up-armed gunship conversion of a strategic bomber. A single-engined high-speed fighter with the range of a bomber was thought to be an engineering impossibility. 8th Air Force Bomber Operations 1942-1943 The 8th Air Force started operations from Britain in August 1942. At first, because of the limited scale of operations, there was no conclusive evidence American doctrine was failing. In the 26 operations flown to the end of 1942, the loss rate had been under 2%. In January 1943, at the Casablanca Conference, the Allies formulated the Combined Bomber Offensive, CBO, plan for round-the-clock bombing USAF daytime operations complementing the RAF nighttime raids on industrial centers. In June 1943, the Combined Chiefs of Staff issued the Point Blank Directive to destroy the Luftwaffe's capacity before the planned invasion of Europe, putting the CBO into full implementation. German daytime fighter efforts were, at that time, focused on the Eastern Front and several other distant locations. Initial efforts by the 8th met limited and unorganized resistance, but with every mission the Luftwaffe moved more aircraft to the west and quickly improved their battle direction. In fall 1943, the 8th Air Force's heavy bombers conducted a series of deep penetration raids into Germany, beyond the range of escort fighters. The Schweinfurt Regensburg mission in August lost 60 B-17s of a force of 376, the October 14 attack lost 77 of a force of 291 26% of the attacking force. Losses were so severe that long-range missions were called off for a time until an effective escort could be found. For the U.S., the very concept of self-defending bombers was called into question. But instead of abandoning daylight raids and turning to night bombing, as the RAF suggested, they chose other paths, at first it was believed that a bomber with more guns, the Boeing YB-40, would be able to escort the bomber formations, but, when the concept proved to be unsuccessful, thoughts then turned to the Lockheed P-38 Lightning. In early 1943 the USAF also decided that the Republic P-47 Thunderbolt and P-51B be considered for the role of a smaller escort fighter and, in July a report stated that the P-51B was the most promising plane with an endurance of 4 hours 45 minutes with the standard internal fuel of 184 gallons plus 150 gallons carried externally. In August a P-51B was fitted with an extra internal 85-gallon tank and, although there were problems with longitudinal stability and some compromises in performance with the tank full, it was decided that because the fuel from the fuselage tank would be used during the initial stages of a mission, 
the fuel tank would be fitted in all Mustangs destined for 8 Fighter Command. P-51 Introduction The P-51 Mustang was a solution to the need for an effective bomber escort. It used a common, reliable engine and had internal space for a large fuel load. With external fuel tanks, it could accompany the bombers from England to Germany and back. However, the Allison engine in the P-51A had a single-stage supercharger that caused power to drop off rapidly above 15,000 feet. This made it unsuitable for combat at the altitudes where USAF bombers planned to fly. Following the RAF's initial disappointing experience with the Mustang I, P-51A, Ronald Harker, a test pilot for Rolls-Royce suggested fitting a Merlin 61, as fitted to the Spitfire Mk9. The Merlin 61 had a two-speed two-stage intercooled supercharger, designed by Stanley Hooker of Rolls-Royce and this gave an increase in horsepower from the Allison's 1,200 HP, 895 kilowatts, to 1,620 HP, 1,208 kilowatts, 1,720 HP in war emergency power, delivering an increase of top speed from 390 miles per hour. 628 km per hour, to 440 miles per hour, 708 km per hour, as well as raising the service ceiling to almost 42,000 feet, 12,800 meters. Initial flights of what was known to Rolls-Royce as the Mustang MKX were completed at Rolls-Royce airfield at Hucknall in October 1942 and after urging from the US assistant air attaché in the UK, Thomas Hitchcock Jr., a similar conversion then took place in the U.S., leading to production of the P-51B beginning at North American's Inglewood, California plant in June 1943 and P-51S started to become available to the 8th and 9th Air Forces in the winter of 1943-1944. During the conversion to the two-stage supercharged Merlin engine, which was slightly heavier than the single-stage Allison and so moved the aircraft's center of gravity forward, North American's engineers took the opportunity to add a large additional fuselage fuel tank behind the pilot, greatly increasing the aircraft's range over that of the earlier P-51A. By the time the point-blank offensive resumed in early 1944, matters had changed. Bomber escort defenses were initially layered, using the shorter-range P-38S and P-47S to escort the bombers during the initial stages of the raid before handing over to the P-51S when they were forced to turn for home. This provided continuous coverage during the raid. The Mustang was so clearly superior to earlier U.S. designs that the 8th Air Force began to steadily switch its fighter groups to the Mustang, first swapping arriving P-47 groups to the 9th Air Force in exchange for those that were using P-51S then gradually converting its Thunderbolt and Lightning groups. By the end of 1944, 14 of its 15 groups flew the Mustang. The Luftwaffe's twin-engine Messerschmitt Bf 110 heavy fighters brought up to deal with the bombers proved to be easy prey for the Mustangs and had to be quickly withdrawn from combat. The Focke-Wulf FW-190A, already suffering from poor high-altitude performance, was outperformed by the Mustang at the B-17S altitude and when laden with heavy bomber hunting weapons as a replacement for the more vulnerable twin engines or storer heavy fighters, it suffered heavy losses. The Messerschmitt Bf 109 had comparable performance at high altitudes, but its lightweight airframe was even more greatly affected by increases in armament. The Mustang's much lighter armament, tuned for anti-fighter combat, allowed it to overcome these single-engined opponents. Fighting the Luftwaffe At the start of 1944, Major General James Doolittle, the new commander of the 8th Air Force, ordered many fighter pilots to stop flying in formation with the bombers and instead attack the Luftwaffe wherever it could be found. The aim was to achieve air supremacy. Mustang groups were sent far ahead of the bombers in a fighter sweep in order to intercept attacking German fighters. The Luftwaffe answered with the Gefex Verband battle formation. This consisted of a Sturm Group of heavily armed and armored FW-190AS escorted by two Begleit Gruppen of Messerschmitt Bf-109s, whose task was to keep the Mustangs away from the FW-190AS attacking the bombers. This strategy proved to be problematic, as the large German formation took a long time to assemble and was difficult to maneuver. 
it was often intercepted by the P-51 fighter sweeps before it could attack the bombers. However, German attacks against bombers could be effective when they did occur, the bomber destroyer FW-190AS swept in from astern and often pressed their attacks to within 100 YD, 91 M. While not always able to avoid contact with the escorts, the threat of mass attacks and later the company front, aid abreast, assaults by armored Sturm Group FW-190AS brought an urgency to attacking the Luftwaffe wherever it could be found, either in the air or on the ground. Beginning in late February 1944, 8th Air Force fighter units began systematic strafing attacks on German airfields with increasing frequency and intensity throughout the spring with the objective of gaining air supremacy over the Normandy battlefield. In general these were conducted by units returning from escort missions but, beginning in March, many groups also were assigned airfield attacks instead of bomber support. The P-51 particularly with the advent of the K-14 gyro gunsight and the development of clobber colleges for the training of fighter pilots in fall 1944, was a decisive element in Allied countermeasures against the Jagd Verband. The numerical superiority of the USAF fighters, superb flying characteristics of the P-51 and pilot proficiency helped cripple the Luftwaffe's fighter force. As a result, the fighter threat to US and later British, bombers was greatly diminished by July 1944. The RAF, long proponents of night bombing for protection, were able to reopen daylight bombing in 1944 as a result of the crippling of the Luftwaffe fighter arm. Reichsmarschall Hermann Göring, commander of the German Luftwaffe during the war, was quoted as saying, When I saw Mustangs over Berlin, I knew the jig was up. Beyond point blank. On April 15, 1944, 8 Fighter Command began Operation Jackpot, attacks on Luftwaffe fighter airfields. As the efficacy of these missions increased, the number of fighters at the German airbases fell to the point where they were no longer considered worthwhile targets. On May 21, targets were expanded to include railways, locomotives and rolling stock used by the Germans to transport materiel and troops, in missions dubbed Chattanooga. The P-51 excelled at this mission, although losses were much higher on strafing missions than in air-to-air -air combat, partially because the Mustang's liquid-cooled engine, particularly its coolant system, was vulnerable to small arms fire, unlike the air-cooled double WASP radials of its Republic P-47 Thunderbolt stablemates based in England, regularly tasked with ground strafing missions. Given the overwhelming Allied air superiority, the Luftwaffe put its effort into the development of aircraft of such high performance that they could operate with impunity, but which also made bomber attack much more difficult, merely from the flight velocities they achieved. Foremost among these were the Messerschmitt Mi-163B point defense rocket interceptors, which started their operations with JG-400 near the end of July 1944 and the longer endurance Messerschmitt Mi-262A jet fighter first flying with the Grupp Strength Commando Nowitny unit by the end of September 1944. In action, the Mi-163 proved to be more dangerous to the Luftwaffe than to the Allies and was never a serious threat. The Mi-262A was a serious threat, but attacks on their airfields neutralized them. The pioneering Junkers Jamo 004 axial flow jet engines of the Mi-262AS needed careful nursing by their pilots and these aircraft were particularly vulnerable during takeoff and landing. Lt. Chuck Yeager of the 357th Fighter Group was one of the first American pilots to shoot down in Mi-262, which he caught during its landing approach. On October 7, 1944, Lt. Urban L. Drew of the 361st Fighter Group shot down two Mi-262s that were taking off, while on the same day Lt. Col. Hubert Zemka, who had transferred to the Mustang-equipped 479th Fighter Group, shot down what he thought was a BF-109, only to have his gun camera film reveal that it may have been an Mi-262. On February 25, 1945, Mustangs of the 55th Fighter Group surprised an entire staffle of Mi-262AS at takeoff and destroyed six jets. The Mustang also proved useful against the V-1S launched toward London. P-51 
P51B slash CS using 150 octane fuel were fast enough to catch the V1 and operated in concert with shorter range aircraft like advanced marks of the Supermarine Spitfire and Hawker Tempest. By May 8, 1945, the 8th, 9th and 15th Air Force's P-51 groups claimed some 4,950 aircraft shot down, about half of all USAF claims in the European theater, the most claimed by any Allied fighter in air-to-air -air combat, and 4,131 destroyed on the ground. Losses were about 2,520 aircraft. The 8th Air Force's 4th Fighter Group was the top-scoring fighter group in Europe, with 1,016 enemy aircraft claimed destroyed. This included 550 claimed in aerial combat and 466 on the ground. In air combat, the top-scoring P-51 units, both of which exclusively flew Mustangs, were the 357th Fighter Group of the 8th Air Force with 565 air-to-air -air combat victories and the 9th Air Force's 354th Fighter Group with 664, which made it one of the top-scoring fighter groups. The top Mustang ace was the USAF's George Preddy, whose final tally stood at 26.83 victories, 23 of which were scored with the P-51 when he was shot down and killed by friendly fire on Christmas Day 1944 during the Battle of the Bulge. In China and the Pacific Theater In early 1945, P-51C, D and K variants also joined the Chinese Nationalist Air Force. These Mustangs were provided to the 3rd, 4th and 5th fighter groups and used to attack Japanese targets in occupied areas of China. The P-51 became the most capable fighter in China while the Imperial Japanese Army Air Force used the Nakaji Maki 84 Hei 8 against it. The P-51 was a relative latecomer to the Pacific Theater. This was due largely to the need for the aircraft in Europe, although the P-38S twin-engine design was considered a safety advantage for long over-water flights. The first P-51S were deployed in the Far East later in 1944 operating in close support and escort missions, as well as tactical photo reconnaissance. As the war in Europe wound down, the P-51 became more common, eventually, with the capture of Iwo Jima, it was able to be used as a bomber escort during Boeing B-29 Superfortress missions against the Japanese homeland. The P-51 was often mistaken for the Japanese Kawasaki Ki-61 Hein in both China and Pacific because of its similar appearance. Pilot Observations Chief Naval Test Pilot and CO Captured Enemy Aircraft Flight Captain Eric Brown, CBE, DSC, AFC, RN, tested the Mustang at Ray Farnborough in March 1944 and noted, the Mustang was a good fighter and the best escort due to its incredible range, make no mistake about it. It was also the best American dogfighter. But the laminar flow wing fitted to the Mustang could be a little tricky. It could not by any means outturn a Spitfire. No way. It had a good rate of roll, better than the Spitfire, so I would say the pluses to the Spitfire and the Mustang just about equate. If I were in a dogfight, I'd prefer to be flying the Spitfire. The problem was I wouldn't like to be in a dogfight near Berlin, because I could never get home to Britain in a Spitfire. The US Air Forces, Flight Test Engineering, assessed the Mustang B on April 24, 1944 The rate of climb is good and the high speed in level flight is exceptionally good at all altitudes, from sea level to 40,000 feet. The airplane is very maneuverable with good controllability at indicated speeds to 400 miles per hour. The stability about all axes is good and the rate of roll is excellent, however, the radius of turn is fairly large for a fighter. The cockpit layout is excellent but visibility is poor on the ground and only fair in level flight. Kurt Berlagen, the third highest scoring German fighter pilot of World War II's Western Front, with 112 confirmed victories, three against Mustangs, later stated, we would outturn the P-51 and the other American fighters, with the BF-109 or the FW-190. Their turn rate was about the same. The P-51 was faster than us but our munitions and cannon were better. Heinz Barr said that the P-51 was perhaps the most difficult of all Allied aircraft to meet in combat. It was fast, maneuverable, hard to see, 
and difficult to identify because it resembled the Mi-109. Post-World War II In the aftermath of World War II, the USAF consolidated much of its wartime combat force and selected the P-51 as a standard piston engine fighter, while other types, such as the P-38 and P-47, were withdrawn or given substantially reduced roles. As the more advanced, P-80 and P-84, jet fighters were introduced, the P-51 was also relegated to secondary duties. In 1947, the newly formed U.S. Air Force Strategic Air Command employed Mustangs alongside F-6 Mustangs and F-82 Twin Mustangs, due to their range capabilities. In 1948, the designation P-51, P for Pursuit, was changed to F-51, F for Fighter, and the existing F designator for photographic reconnaissance aircraft was dropped because of a new designation scheme throughout the U.S. Air Force. Aircraft still in service in the U.S. Air Force or Air National Guard, ANG, when the system was changed included, F-51B, F-51D, F-51K, RF-51D, formerly F-6D, RF-51K, formerly F-6K, and TRF-51D, two-seat trainer conversions of F-6DS. They remained in service from 1946 through 1951. By 1950, Although Mustangs continued in service with the U.S. Air Force after the war, the majority of the U.S. Air Force Mustangs had become surplus to requirements and placed in storage, while some were transferred to the Air Force Reserve, AFRAS, and the Air National Guard, ANG. From the start of the Korean War, the Mustang once again proved useful. A substantial number of stored or in-service F-51DS were shipped, via aircraft carriers, to the combat zone and were used by the U.S. Air Force, the South African Air Force and the Republic of Korea Air Force, ROCAF. The F-51 was used for ground attack, fitted with rockets and bombs and photo reconnaissance, rather than being as interceptors or pure fighters. After the first North Korean invasion, U.S. Air Force units were forced to fly from bases in Japan and the F-51DS, with their long range and endurance, could attack targets in Korea that short-ranged F-80 jets could not. Because of the vulnerable liquid cooling system, however, the F-51S sustained heavy losses to ground fire. Due to its lighter structure and a shortage of spare parts, the newer, faster F-51H was not used in Korea. Mustangs continued flying with U.S. Air Force and ROCAF fighter-bomber units on close support and interdiction missions in Korea until 1953 when they were largely replaced as fighter bombers by U.S. Air Force F-84S and by United States Navy, USN, Grumman F-9F Panthers. Other air forces and units using the Mustang included the Royal Australian Air Forces, ROF, S-77 Squadron, which flew Australian-built Mustangs as part of British Commonwealth Forces Korea. The Mustangs were replaced by Gloucester Meteor F-8S in 1951. The South African Air Forces, SAAF, S-2 Squadron used U.S. built Mustangs as part of the U.S. 18th Fighter Bomber Wing and had suffered heavy losses by 1953, after which 2 Squadron converted to the F-86 Sabre. F-51S flew in the Air Force Reserve and Air National Guard throughout the 1950s. The last American U.S. Air Force Mustang was F-51 D-30 NAAF Serial No. 44-74936, which was finally withdrawn from service with the West Virginia Air National Guard's 167th Fighter Interceptor Squadron in January 1957 and retired to what was then called the Air Force Central Museum, although it was briefly reactivated to fly at the 50th anniversary of the Air Force Aerial Firepower demonstration at the Air Proving Ground. Eglin AFB, Florida, on May 6, 1957. This aircraft, painted as P-51D-15 NA Serial No. 44-15174, is on display at the National Museum of the United States Air Force, Wright-Patterson AFB, in Dayton, Ohio. The final withdrawal of the Mustang from U.S. Air Force dumped hundreds of P-51S onto the civilian market. The rights to the Mustang design were purchased from North American by the Cavalier Aircraft Corporation, which attempted to market the surplus Mustang aircraft in the U.S. and overseas. 
In 1967 and again in 1972, the U.S. Air Force procured batches of remanufactured Mustangs from Cavalier, most of them destined for air forces in South America and Asia that were participating in the Military Assistance Program, MAP. These aircraft were remanufactured from existing original F-51D airframes fitted with new V-1650-7 engines, a new radio, tall F-51H-type vertical tails and a stronger wing that could carry 60.50 in, 13 mm, machine guns and a total of eight underwing hardpoints. Two 1,000 pounds, 450 kilograms, bombs and six 5 inches, 130 mm, rockets could be carried. They all had an original F-51D type canopy, but carried a second seat for an observer behind the pilot. One additional Mustang was a two-seat dual-control TF. Please subscribe and thanks for watching.